Today was procedural to get through. Um, it was an unprecedented action uh, that night to not to just what happened, but to, to take the whole purse and hold it until you figure out what's going on. Uh, but the good news is we have a regulation for that because um, it, it is such uh, substantial withholding uh, that we are to get into a hearing room as fast as we possibly can, uh, gather some additional information, which we did, uh, look at some past practice, which we discussed today, and make sure we're following the law and follow the regulation. Um, so the commission could have very easily today withheld the whole amount. Um, I think it was appropriate to at least release half of the amount. And I don't, I don't think that the public should take what we did today as any indication on what the final outcome will be. Uh, because I don't think we're even to the point yet where we have filed the complaints. So we don't have all of the AG's information and all of the attorney general's uh, uh, evidence that's still, still coming in. So uh, I wouldn't read anything into what was done today. I just wanted to make it clear for the record, uh, not just because this is a very unprecedented action that we follow the law to the T, uh, but it's also, I think, for the public to understand exactly what we're doing, why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, but again, I would not read anything into this as what the final actions would be for either party. Chairman, uh, obviously you're, you're collecting evidence. At this point, the world has seen the video, right? So I wonder, why the delay until December? I know I think a lot of people are hoping there would be some resolution today. Why, why the delay until December? Uh, I want to deal with the whole scope. I think it's pretty easy to see what happened um, with Khabib and Connor. That's kind of self-explanatory. As you know, we had a lot of other people that thought that they wanted to participate that night. Some of them are under the Nevada State Athletic Commission jurisdiction. Some of them are under the Metropolitan Police Department and the Clark County District Attorney jurisdiction. Uh, it's, it's very unprecedented to jump into a cage and start hitting a fighter when you're not there uh, or in the contest itself. So a lot of that evidence and gathering that evidence and film that you are seeing uh, and the public is seeing is pretty obvious in and of itself, but there's a lot of film that we're reviewing that you're not seeing. You know, the entire T-Mobile arena, how certain people got in, how certain people got out, where certain people went, uh, if certain people are still in the country, if they're not. There's a lot going on that the public's probably not aware of. Uh, and my job is to make sure the full scope uh, when all the complaints are filed, it's a full scope. And we need to give the, we need to give the uh, defendants enough time uh, per statute and per law to hire representation, go through the complaint, you know, work on all the process that needs to take place. Uh, I would have very much like to have it done by November, uh, in the November hearing, but it just didn't work out that way on Thursday. So I think, and if you look at past practice for us to go from an October 6th event, or a 6th event, to a December hearing is lightning fast, especially with everything that we're dealing with here. Um, and it's not just a simple drug case. You know, even those type of things. Chairman, you pointed out that had you had all the video available to you, you would have held Mr. McGregor's yeah. purse that night. Can you elaborate a little bit on kind of what, what you mean by that, what it was you saw that would have led you to that? Well, I, I think that Connor is obviously, uh, the action started with the week, and Connor was reacting to the action. So, uh, understood. Uh, but he also was on top of the cage, and he initiated the first punch against somebody from the beach corner. He didn't have to do that. Uh, and thank God Chavez got him and pulled him back down on the cage. Or this would have been a whole lot worse than it was. The bolt of him and everyone else who knows what would have happened. I'm really happy that you know, you know, the next defensive lineman from, from Big Time Football School that grabbed him. Uh, or we would have had a lot more problems. So we just didn't have that footage at the time. Other fighters were also involved in this, in this situation, I mean, the brawl, some other fighters from the UFC. Are you actually going to take any, you know, any action against those guys as well? Uh, anybody that was licensed by the U.S. by the Nevada State Athletic Commission that was involved will have action on this. So, yeah. In December, I'm sorry, I think the answer was earlier, but um, the first amount that you withheld from your account, you can determine then whether or not you're going to like 20% or you know, more of it to him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the final action for both fighters person, uh, in this case, the releasing of some portion or none of Omega Madoff's. 
and uh, any action that would be brought against Conor McGregor, uh, in which he would have to uh, pay. So it's, it's all still up in the air. Uh, and like I said, I think it's really important that the public understand that what happened today has nothing to do with that hearing and what the final action will be. It's just where I, as chairman, and I think our commission is comfortable that this is a substantial amount of money to elite, so he can pay bills and go about his life, but it's also a substantial amount of money to compel him to show up and to go through the proper hearing and to see the commission. Mr. McGregor has a few proposed conditions before. Will that you know, have any bearing on what happens in December, or is this viewed as kind of a, an incident unto itself? Uh, no. I think that they're different issues. The commission may see it different, though. I'm just one of five. So, uh, the commission may look at past practice. Uh, but the biggest issues that Congress has to root out of our jurisdiction, the New York issue, I'm assuming the one you're referring to, uh, that's not something that we can get involved with. You know, it's, it's, that's his issue there, uh, but not his issue here. But he did have the issue here in Las Vegas as well with the, the press conference incident. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> we'll get to all that. <laughs> The fighters in the new sense that they were not, for example, they were not licensed by Nevada. Like, they apply for a license here in the future. Are you guys going to look into that as well? Well, you've got you've got a couple of different things. You have fighters that were licensed in Nevada. You have corners that were licensed by Nevada, and then you have fighters that were in other corners that were not licensed as fighters, but they were licensed as corners. So the, 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 the right way to state it is anybody who had a license, regardless of their role, is going to be involved in this industry. But are you going to, in the future, if they apply for a license, will this hinder that possibly? It's all on the table, absolutely. I, I can't say what will happen, but anybody who had a license, whether they were a fighter, a corner, a manager, if they were involved, they will have a hearing, and at that hearing, that will be decided. But what if, that will be. I, but, I can't tell you what that will be. It but could, those, if they didn't have a license and they apply in the future for a license, could this affect that? I don't believe we have that situation okay. right now. So, uh, but yes, it could. Yeah. Thank you, sir. They will be a person.